Okay, boys and girls, we are going to start our Procreate practice. Find your Procreate app. It's the little black app with a rainbow swirl. Um, you should start a new picture. So in the top corner where you see that little plus sign up here, click that. Then just click screen size on the very top. That will get you just a normal size of your iPad. So we're gonna do a practice where we draw some forms. You're gonna draw a sphere, a cylinder, and a cube. First, start with red and use your Apple Pencil to get a brighter red. So outside circle goes to red, inside circle goes to right up in the left corner here for a bright red. Um, use a thick brush, let's see here. Not a thin brush and not a brush that is very, very blendy like these. Um, let's see, if we go down to painting. Let's use a monoline. So go to calligraphy, go to monoline, select that brush, and we're going to draw a big circle. We want the circle to be perfect. So draw with your pen and then hold down until your iPad makes that circle perfect. Size it down so it's about a third of the screen because you have two more forms to draw. Then drag your red color and just drop it in. Now go to your layers, add a new layer. This is where we're gonna draw the cylinder next. Then select a blue color, a brighter blue. So keep the inside circle where it is, outside circle goes to blue. We're gonna draw a cylinder now. So a cylinder starts with an oval on the top. So draw and hold, 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 and your iPad will make that oval perfect for you. Drop that blue color in. Next, we're gonna make two straight lines coming down that are perfect. So draw from the side of the oval and Hold, so you make a straight line. And then same thing for the next side, draw straight down. Oops. Draw straight down and then hold, so your iPad makes that line perfect for you. Then on the bottom, just make a curved line. Don't hold your pen that time. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is make sure this is closed. Look at all my lines, make sure they're touching because what I'm gonna do next is drop this blue color in and I wanted to make sure there was no breaks in my lines, otherwise it would have filled my whole screen. Okay, keep that like that for now. Then let's go to a green color. Bright green is fine. And then we're gonna make a cube. So new layer, add your cube. Start with a square, medium sized square. Hold your pencil down so it makes a perfect square. Then what I want you to do is go to the move tool up here, the little arrow. Then select the wrench. You're gonna click copy and then paste. And what that's gonna do, if I click the move tool again, it made two perfect squares the same for me. So just scoot this up a little bit to the corner so that we can finish the cube. All right, go back to your brush. We're gonna make some straight lines now connecting these corners. Hold your pencil so it makes a straight line. Go up to the other top, the right top. Hold, make a straight line. Bottom, hold, make a straight line. Make sure your lines are connected. And then bottom, hold, make a straight line. It doesn't have to be perfect, we just wanna make sure there's no breaks because we're gonna start to fill this in now. Okay, take your green color and fill in the hole. Oops, that means there was a break in my line somewhere. Gotta make sure there's no breaks here. Okay, take your pencil and fill in the first square right here. This is gonna just be green. Oh, there must be another break in my line somewhere. Let's see if this works. Nope. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna undo this cube. It seems like it's not working so well. I think I'm gonna undo those lines. What I'm gonna do here is go back to layer three and make those lines again. Let's see if that helps. Straight line, hold. Straight line, hold. Straight line, hold. And straight line, hold. All connected. Okay, I think I just realized what the problem was. I need these layers to actually be connected. Layer three and this layer here. So use your fingers to pinch them together like this. And now they're connected. So now what I can do here now that they're connected is I can fill these spots in. Okay, fill in the whole front square with light, uh, bright green, normal green. Then take your inside circle and move it a little bit towards 
oops, go back to green. Move it a little bit towards the black area to make a darker green. Then pull that darker green into the side here. Now use your pen to just fill this in so it doesn't look like it's see-through, this little line right here on the bottom right side. Now on the top, I want you to go up Go back to the normal green, then go up towards white to make a lighter green. Then pull that lighter green on the top here. Use your pen again to shade this top left part in, this line, so that you don't have a see-through looking cube. It looks solid. Okay, your cube is technically done. So you've got dark, medium, and light values on that. It looks three-dimensional. If you wanted to, you could even create like a shadow by going to black. Then moving your brush on the side here down, the opacity to get a little bit more see-through so it's not as dark. And you can just kind of sketch a shadow. I would suggest a brush that's bigger. Even a sketchier brush, like a blotchy paintbrush, might be good too to make a shadow. So you can kind of experiment with making that shadow by the side here. Okay, let's go to the cylinder now. Cylinder is gonna be a little bit trickier because we have to do some blending. So use your finger, hold down on the blue, and that blue will come right back up to your menu here, the same blue you had. Pull your blue color down, oops, let's do that again. Pull your blue color down towards black to get a darker blue. Okay, now we're gonna use our pen on the side here to make a shadow for the side of the cylinder. I can use this blotchy brush or I can go back to the brush I had before. I think that was like a monoline brush really sized up really big so I can do that one turn my opacity up a bit so as we learn from third grade we shade only the right side of the cylinder and then I want to go back to that normal blue again and then I want to go and grab a lighter blue so turn my blue up to a lighter blue Make your highlight. You're also going to use your highlight to shade in the top. All the way, that whole oval. And then I'm going to go back to my shadow color. So just hold down to get this color picker. Get my shadow color back. Sketch in a shadow on the other side. Now what I'm gonna do is use my smudge tool. Go up to the little finger on the top here, <clears throat> and your smudge tool will allow you to kind of blend these colors together to get them a little bit more like they're fading into each other. Almost like I'm using oil or chalk pastels and I'm blending with my finger or charcoal. Now you might notice that on the top, on the bottom here, we got a little messy. So use your eraser and just clean that up. We don't want any of the shadow to be on the side. Oops, turn my eraser down, it's a little bit big. Okay, I'm gonna go back to this color too and just clean this up. This should be a nice solid. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's go to the sphere now. Take my color menu here with my finger, hold down on the iPad, get that red color back. Scoot this towards dark red. I think I'll just use the same brush again for my shadow. We learned that a sphere only has the shadow on half of it and then it blends into the other colors. So I'm just going to go up towards lighter red. So this is kind of like a medium red value. Then I'm going to go back to my original red. And then I'm going to start to get that light value up here, the highlight. So go up towards lighter red, even more. So do maybe like four or five layers of this red, and then your last layer should be pretty light, that light value. You can use your smudge tool again to kind of blend these together a little bit. I'm going to turn my smudge tool down a bit. It's a little bit big. Okay, last part is just erase the sketchy marks from the background. If I got any shadow on the background or any smudge. 
Okay, looks pretty good. Um, if I wanted to also experiment with a shadow on the ground for some of these forms, I can do that as well. Cylinder would have kind of a curved shadow like this. So would a sphere, kind of a curved shadow like this. You can play around with this or you don't have to, it's up to you. Okay, if I'm done with these three forms, I can check in at the check-in table and then I can move on. All right, we are done.